favorite VPNs. Okay. First off, why yeah. even make this video when we already have a top five best VPNs video, which you should totally watch by the way, so go check that out. That's because all our VPN reviews and top VPN videos and everything else on our site is based on a systematic review protocol. At the time of making this video, our VPN review protocol is on version 3.1, meaning 65% of the score is completely systematic and gives me zero ability to influence. The next 35% does have the possibility for bias, but the goal is to be unbiased, and after years, we have maintained what I like to think is an excellent reputation. So even that 35% is as close to reasonable as possible. The end goal of our tools is for this to be completely systematic. So even if you absolutely hate our guts and want us to burn in hell, you can still trust the data. But I wanna talk about myself for once and actually give you a special a sneak peek into how I personally choose a VPN and some of my favorite services. Let's get into it. Step one, high standards. There are so many VPNs on the market, like hundreds, and I'll be damned if I settle for less than great. This is going to be the company I'm trusting all of my web traffic with, so I'm gonna take it seriously. I also don't wanna put a price tag on my web traffic and my data, so no budgets here. Step two, open source. VPNs are unique because almost all of them are based on either OpenVPN or WireGuard, meaning you're able to use those respective clients with pretty much any decent VPN. But I don't wanna do that. I like having all my VPNs functionality through its own unique first-party client where they can add their own bells and whistles. So I like first-party clients and I'd like something open source to know for a fact there are no unneeded trackers or anything else fishy going on. NordVPN. The VPNs that use open source clients that I've taken a look at are the following. Step three, basic elimination. To start with some basic elimination here. I reviewed AirVPN years ago, and that review is still to this day almost completely accurate with the exception of their questionable Android application. I don't want a VPN from 2017. Goodbye, Air. PIA is not only US based, which throws me a bit out of whack, but one of their employees was responsible for a huge amount of the fake smear campaigns regarding their competitors, which is a really low blow and makes me wonder why they felt the need to do that. This is completely personal, again, but the fact they have proven in court twice they don't log almost sketches me out more, considering there's really nothing stopping the glorious US of A from serving a gag order to now start keeping logs secretly on their users. At least that's my theory. And we would never really know about it either way. Like seriously, why wouldn't they be served a gag order after they couldn't assist in two legal cases? I'm genuinely asking if someone has a good answer, let me know. There's really nothing stopping the US from doing this. Then we find blog posts where they refuse to use a warrant canary, which would help with this issue, but the reasoning for it being it solves the wrong problem because you just shouldn't keep the logs in the first place as proven by our two court cases, by the way. VPNs are based on trust and I don't like it. I don't wanna to touch that. Be gone, PIA, and you viewer have every right to disagree with me. We're three steps in with five options left. So I guess we'd call this my top five. The cool thing is if we break down each of these options, none of them claim to keep logs, all are open source, all of them have some kind of audits or a situation which doesn't require one, and all of them are very trusted and have had no questionable past incidents. Also, all of them can be set up with zero personal information with extreme ease. So take a picture, let it soak in. Here are my personal five favorite services at the time of making this video. But let's continue elimination. Step four, usability. Orbot is on this list and it has an asterisk next to it because you're just tunneling all of your web traffic through Tor. You're really just using Tor. This is not a VPN. It works by using the VPN slot on your phone, but it's a VPN. What? But it's not a VPN, I'm getting myself confused here. It's a Tor, not a VPN. Because of this, Orbot is incredibly slow to use and it only works on Android. This isn't something I could use as my main VPN, but it's a solid backup option for one of my devices. It's still gonna be crossed off this list though. Up next is RiseUp slash Calyx VPN. These are probably the most unique VPNs on this list because they are 100% free with zero registration. Load up Fdroid, the open source app store, install them and connect. Anyone can do this. These VPNs are run by two fantastic and trusted organizations, and they run on a project called Leap, which aims to give transparency on the server side of the VPN, which is something incredibly rare and is part of why this is one of the only free VPNs I can comfortably recommend to people. However, they don't have first-party clients on all devices, 
and they for me are both incredibly slow with very limited server options. You get what you pay for. So while it is a great free option, I am going to opt out. And now step five, the finals. To recap where we're at so far, we're at the top three. Here are my top three services. I would be very happy using any of these services. So for the record, I really love these three, but let's begin some elimination. Molvad has no transparency report or warrant canary, no 2FA, which isn't a huge deal considering their passwordless setup, but I just don't like that. This is personal, again, but I do prefer the other options available to me over Molvad at this point in time. The battle for the number one spot is a difficult one, especially since they're both in the pricey range, but ultimately, I felt I had to give it to IVPN. They support WireGuard, unlike Proton. I had better speeds with them. I preferred their clients. They have an email list signup option. I've had the pleasure of communicating with some of their core team members and personally trust them to handle my web traffic. And they do some ballsy shit like putting out these blog posts, calling out the VPN industry, and even putting together nifty tools to educate people on what VPNs really don't do for you, as well as sometimes do for you. They're just painfully honest. They don't have an affiliate plan, so there's nothing I or anyone else gets by recommending them, which like for me is just the cherry on top. I really have nothing negative to say about IVPN. It just feels like an upgraded Molvet to me in almost every way. So the final list in order was the following. I'll leave links below to each service. Go check them out, they're all great. And that is how I would choose a VPN and those are my favorites. But I wanna hear what yours are. So leave your favorite VPNs below. I am super hyped to see some of those battles. If you wanna get a more fair and systematic approach to VPNs, check out our top five best VPNs video, which follows our review protocol, not my protocol, that'll be in the description. And go to our website at techlore.tech where we keep an up-to-date chart and other tools to help you choose a good service and to bring transparency to the VPN industry. On that note, be sure to share those tools around because these shitty VPN review sites pay thousands of dollars for really good SEO and we, we're we not gonna compete with that. So I need everyone to step up and share that so that we can get the word out and help educate people properly through our tools. Thank you for watching this video and thank you to our wonderful patrons for helping support our content. Be sure to join our Patreon below, like and share this video and see you next time on Tech.